Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest instalment of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So speaking of Todd, well I've got two books I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Paroxysm of Fear Volume 1 by Todd Wittenmeyer, and Wrapped Up in Nothing, a Mr. Blank Yarn by Ollie Jacobs. So we'll start with Todd's book. This was actually sent to me by Time for Books. I think she bought it and read it, and then she was going to unhaul it anyway just because I think she's kind of keeping her books to a minimum. Uh, and so she offered to send it to me. I'm going to read the blurb here. Todd Wittenmeyer is the author of several books. He resides in the backwoods of eastern Kentucky where he is at work on the next project. Paroxysm of Fear Volume 1 is his first collection of short stories to be published. Enter a world where some people get their just desserts while others get away with unimaginable crimes against humanity. Your fears will run the gamut of the impossible in these six chilling tales. Discover an old country doctor who loves selling his ghastly wares to salesmen. Or a man who doubts his own existence. How about a man who decides to monopolise a raft by ignoring the cries of his fellow passengers as they try to survive shark-filled waters? Then there is a story of one man's unwavering faith as he stands up for his god on an alien planet. Also a story of true ma romance. Also a story of true romance as one man tries to justify his love for a monster. And finally a sci-fi tale of greed on a planet called Torrent 7. It's all inside. Take a peek or if you're brave enough, just take the literary walk. You won't be disappointed. So I've read one of, uh, one of Todd's books in the past. I actually think he's, his short stories work better than his novels just because he's a really good ideas man. And I think the, the medium of short stories allows him to s sort of investigate more ideas more quickly. There were a few formatting issues in this, including like, for example, you can see here, that's uh, the first half. And then here we have like the story towards the end. So it's sort of spaced differently. But as for the actual content, it was pretty good. There weren't too many spelling and grammar mistakes, and I'm like a hawk for those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to check out some of my tabs, and then I'm going to kind of give you a rating at the end. So a, a mistake I noticed here, there's a sentence that says, he thought briefly of what might be swimming in the depths below him, and his panic took on a life of its. But you can get the gist, you know. So there's a story called The Straw God, and this is the one that kind of investigates this guy's belief in God when he's on a different planet and then uh, there's like a local religion there and whatnot and he kind of sticks to his guns but that actually put me in mind of this sort of debate there is about uh, whether you know whether other worlds would count as sinful because part of the reason that you know when Jesus walked on the earth uh, that I don't know, I'm not religious so I don't know how it works, but there's an argument that, because it was in the Long Earth books by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter where the kind of the far right religious groups were saying, well on those worlds Jesus never walked so they're ungodly places. I quite like this little bit in the uh, Immortel Fortis, I don't know whether I pronounced that right, but that's like the last story in this collection. Then we have this conversation. What about drugs, Jim whispered. Have you heard about those? Brent grid his teeth. I wouldn't care. You see, my mother is a slam coast junkie. Jim grimaced. Ugh, I'm sorry to hear that. I never understood its use. A drug that hits you intermittently and with great force, apparently. He shook his head. I suppose it's the drug's unpredictability that makes it appealing. I just that was interesting. I always find, like, fictional drugs really fascinating. And uh, in this story, we also get this little bit here. After nearly an hour of tossing and turning, Brent tapped a button near his flat pillow and a gentle, tranquilizing mist bathed his face. He was asleep within seconds. I need that invention. All in all, there were some stories that I enjoyed more than others in this, but you know, you get that with every short story collection. And as I say, I enjoyed it on the whole. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And that brings us on to Wrapped Up in Nothing by Ollie Jacobs. This is a Mr. Blank story. And you probably know who Ollie Jacobs is by now because I've talked about him a lot on my channel. I'll read you the blurb here. I woke up in hell. And so begins the saga of Mr. Blank. Left mutilated in the desert with no idea who he is and no way of finding out, all Blank has is a cheap mobile phone to help him communicate and a wallet full of cash. Luckily, he isn't the kind to just lay down and die and so makes his way to the nearby town of Rattlers Creek where he is prepared to ask the many questions that litter his head. And if nobody wants to answer them? Well, Blank finds he has a certain talent for getting people to talk to him. The first in the Mr. Blank series, Wrapped Up in Nothing is a crime thriller from the twisted mind that brought you the horror of the Station 17 Chronicles and the humour of Kirk Sandblaster. I don't know why I said it like that. Kirk Sandblaster. And it does definitely have horror and humour in this. Uh, it's very quirky. In a way, some of the like the post-apocalyptic almost setting of it reminded me of uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. So we'll jump in and take a look. A few of the things I would say, uh, this is relatively recent, especially compared to some of his older work. And you can kind of tell it's, it reads like a more mature uh, writer. And it's just interesting, I guess, to track his development through his different books, especially because I've read a whole bunch of them. 
So I'm going to read this little bit out here. Shit, the first little bit of fear got me by the balls then. So far I'd found myself sans tongue, tips and teeth. Add to that a fine layer of bandages covering whatever shitstorm they did to my body and suddenly the presence of a wang is a heartbeating concern. To be honest, I could kind of feel my dick in my pants, but you've heard of those phantom limb syndrome things. What if I was just telling myself I had a wiener, hallucinations and that kind of crap? I had been in the desert a while. The rest I could shrug off. A man's dick. That's too far, son. It's the one body part that a fella could miss. I mean, you grow attached to it, you know? And so this is one of the interesting things about this book, is that it's told from Mr. Blank's point of view. So he's in a conversation here, and obviously he can't talk because he hasn't got a tongue. Well, whoever you are and whatever the hell happened, you look like you could use a drink. Now he was talking my language. He walked over to the cabinet and grabbed a couple of bottles. Uh, and it says down here, pop, pop the cap, put it to my lips, and by God, it was like being home. Except for one last thing. I pointed past the old man when he got behind the counter and his eyes did the rest. You want a cigarette? More than anything in the world, buddy. I thought this uh, little paragraph was interesting. The thing about doing a jigsaw with a blindfold on is that you've got to start with the corners and sides. Once you get the frame, you can work your way inward until the whole picture starts to come clear. Otherwise, you've just got a shit ton of pieces scattered around you. It's like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. Because I've ever thought of that before. And here we learn where he gets his name. So uh, an old man stops him and says, What's your name, son? Under the wraps, I smiled, as, as much as my minimal teeth would allow. A nice, hearty shrug gave him his answer. He just sighed and shook his head. Another blank slate walking through. Hmm, blank, I like that. Sweet, simple, and rolls nicely off the tongue. Well, if you got a tongue, that is. Huh. <laughs> so yeah, Mr. You can call me Mr. Blank Esquire. And we have this, so he's using his phone to communicate, and he says a handy message is safe for future chats is don't know, because he can obviously easily access it and just show people instead of typing it each time. So I like this description here at the start of chapter 11. So the phone finally came to life. Not a call though from my guardian angel, but a message. A simple reminder for something that needed reminding. Change bandages. Well sure that went without saying. The sheriff was inclined to agree with what it was saying though. She looked over my current state and conceded that the best thing for me was to see the local doc. I was by now a rotten corpse. Under the clothes were loose bandages flapping away, barely covering whatever the hell was underneath. They were dirty, ripped and ready to go. As was I, in the opinion of the sheriff. He goes to visit a dentist about his teeth as well, and as somebody who smokes, um, this is relatable. So, uh, the dentist goes, And your breath smells of cigarettes. Explains the blackness that's building up on your upper premolars. Hey, come on now, you son of a bitch. Just because I had a smoke before I came in doesn't mean that the lack of half my jaw is a result of my fine habit. The fuck accusing me of shit that I didn't even do? What nerve. And one final thing I want to share from this is something that I think applies to our world as well, our reality. You know, there's one thing I've learned while in Rattlers Creek. Damn simple, really. That is, that the most dangerous folk are the ones who are just darn nice to me. The ones who smile, shake my hand, and generally look at me not as some mummified mute bringing hell with him, but as a human being. Those are the bastards I trust the least. For all the smiles and chatty banter, there's always something under them that stinks. At least with the likes of the Sheriff and Lucky, they played their cards up front. No bullshit, just forthright opinion. Don't like me? Then let the vitriol flow, my dear. Scared of me? Keep away and do what I say. Easy ways to live. But try to become my friend. Well, sir, that's damn suspicious right there. After all, I wouldn't even be my friend. If I saw me, I'd run a country mile. Nobody walks in from the desert looking like he's just come out of the grave and instantly becomes the mayor. So yeah, all in all, I enjoyed this. The storyline was occasionally difficult to follow, but I think that was partly the point of it, you know? And it was very humorous throughout. There were some really nice little lines, nice little observations on life as well. And uh, I gave this a 3.75 out of 5. So there we have it. That is the latest installment of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.